Interesting news today as uh, John McAfee came out uh, and said that he will not be promoting any more ICOs until the legal structure or framework in America is more well defined. This is really interesting because, I mean, literally the guy has he been... He was the wild west gunslinger of them all. Uh, exactly. So. I mean, $500,000 and this guy will promote your ICO no matter what it is. Um, so when he says that, it's, it's really crazy. So uh, what does you know what does this mean? If even the 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 one guy who will do absolutely anything for five hundred thousand dollars won't promote you, what is it going to dry up? What's going on with ICOs? It means capital formation is going to slow down for ICOs. Uh, it means that U.S. citizens are going to continue to have a harder time. It's not con going to completely halt. So people can still get uh, approved through a, a private placement format with the SEC Reg A plus okay. and go to accredited investors. Um, but it's only going to really come from the institutional channels. And likely those institutional channels will be going through managers because there's a large uh, asymmetry of information in that space. Um, so you'll probably see people have longer time horizons. So I would expect a lot of the liquidity to fall out of those in mean reversion short-term programs. Um, so I'd advise some caution um, in looking at volume and, and volume profiles changing over time and just make sure w if you're taking a lot of size in those sort of things that you're having a, a much longer time horizon. That kind of leads into our next thing, which is uh, GDAX uh, basically buying a few companies and stating that they're going to be go under the SEC's approval, basically, mm -hmm. um, be by becoming a SEC-registered broker-dealer, uh, and then also potentially as an ATS. So it kind of looks like they're getting ready to sell these ICOs, you know, the U.S.-based ICOs that are using something like Reg A+. Um, it's a little bit like Poloniex as well. Uh, also kind of talked about, do you feel like maybe this is the way all of these exchanges in the U.S. are going to move forward in the future? Of course. Nobody wants to be on the wrong side of the SEC. Their revenue model is largely driven uh, by a fee slap on the wrist sort of thing. So the, the risk of regulatory ruin um, or just the, the fees being exorbitant is, is too high for them to try something without well-quantified guidance as to what they should be doing. So everybody that wants to do this will be SEC approved um, to scale. And it seems like everybody's doing it at the same time. As soon as they can uh, be SEC approved and can be SEC regulated, they will be. Um, and that will introduce a lot of flows as that opens the gates for 401ks and things like that. So you'll get, I think, a large velocity up move uh, if that happens. Excellent. Well, when talking about uh, large velocity up moves today, we had one order which drove mm -hmm. the price up. Um, it was actually kind of crazy because it, it was only 2,200 Bitcoin, which is only about $15 mm -hmm. million. Dollars. Um, but the volume right now is just so low. Can you talk a little bit more about the volume and, and what's been absolutely. going on? Absolutely. So volume profiles are historically low, have been historically low. We've been talking about that. Today in the morning, the trailing 24 hours on Bitfinex, which in January was around 50, 60K traded a day, on big days over 100K Bitcoin, uh, right now was 9K Bitcoin this morning. Somebody went on to buy 2,200 Bitcoin, which is about $15 million in, in value, and it moved the market 2%. So you're seeing ultra low liquidity measurements. That's likely just due to no signal generation in this environment. So the highest performing systems in this market right now, if you're to do a five-year look back or two-year look back, back testing stuff is trend. And a lot of those trend systems are slightly larger time frames, and we've been oscillating in a very, very tight range for quite a while. So it's likely that nobody's getting signal long or short uh, but nobody's also having to uh, manage risk out of position. So from here, whether we're up or down, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of participation into the continuation trend signal, and there's also going to be a lot of risk. So the velocity um, 
or the gamma of this market is going to be tremendous once we do start to move. Well, the, if that's to the downside, I think that's going to be very significant, uh, but will probably be a very volatile down move caught by a large bid. And once you can see that in the order flow, it'll likely reverse pretty quick because mm -hmm. uh, it seems like there's a lot of dry powder. There's a lot of stuff coming in. Uh, if it's to the upside, it could be a, a thing where, where you get prints now or, or you never, it, it doesn't come back for quite a while. You can't really beat VWAP unless you're getting prints right then. So I, I'd see a lot of aggressive buying. So we may end up having a uh, interesting weekend, uh, or we might just continue to see this flat market move along. We're going to find out. Um, thank you very much for joining us today on The Crypto Trader. We'll see you again soon.